Uh, so it's kind of probably time to go into the um, into the query session, isn't it? Now yeah. I think. Um, so basically, what I was going to do was try and get everyone to sort of run through building a query from scratch together, uh, so that we can sort of understand how it works. And I guess for people who know Sparkle already a little bit, uh, there'll be some bits that are a bit, you know, you, the, the, maybe a little bit slow for a second, but we've still got some Wikidata specific commands in there. Um, so the first thing to do um, is actually we just want everyone to open up the Wikidata query service. Um, so you can normally just, just Google Wikidata query service. And that should hopefully get you the first result being this one here. And that is where you want to land. So I'll just let everyone sort of get there. You can type it in directly if you want. Uh, lovely. Thank you. So, okay, so if everyone's got here, we're going to start building our query in a second. Uh, but basically, one of the, well, the starting points of building a query, I, I, I am going to try and do um, female chemists. I was going to do female scientists, but it was going to be um, a little bit broad and there's a few difficulties. So a nice simple one is going to be female chemists. And I'm going to use my sort of like important result as my way of figuring out what the query should be. So I'm going to look up Marie Curie on Wikidata. So I'm, in that case, I'm just Googling it. But a common way actually to get to the right item is to go through Wikipedia. Because um, you see, well, actually, of course, she's Actually, there we go. She's there. Um, so you, you, don't ha you can just go straight to Wikidata, but one thing to remember is you can always get there by getting to the, the page, knowing it's the right person. And then on the side there, sorry if you didn't see that, there was a, um, a little link on the side, and there's always, there's always that little link on the left-hand side that will get you to the Wikidata item. So one way or another, we end up here. <coughs> um, and now for our query... I'm going to scroll down and I'm just looking for occupation to see how it's been described. And in fact, I'm just going to use a search here. OK, so you can see here she's got occupation. There's several values. Uh, she was a physicist, a chemist, and a university teacher, among other things. Uh, but this is the relationship I'm looking for. I'm looking for I want to find people who have got occupation chemist and who are also female. So that's going to be the starting point of our query. Um, and if you'll see there, so we can see that when I hover over, it gives you a name. Occupation is a, a number, P106. A chemist is, a, is an item, another item on Wikidata, and it's got a Q number. But I'm going to go here, and we're going to begin constructing the query. So if everyone could just copy this as I'm writing it, um, I'm going to just write the basic, um, the basic sort of structure of the query first. Um, and then we're going to sort of um, take it from there. So the first line would be this select item with a question mark. Can you see that? Okay. Oh, maybe I should go a bit bigger. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's a bit better. And I think I'll get rid of this for a moment. Okay, so select item. Uh, that's your first line that you want. And basically... Just press enter for a second, and on the next line, we're going to write where, and I'll explain what this all means a bit more afterwards. And we're going to do an open squiggly bracket like that, and then another squiggly bracket closed some way below. doesn't really matter where. So this is the basic structure of your Sparkle query. Um, Select is telling you what you actually want to see back in your query, and we'll, that's going to basically relate to our columns that we're going to get. Uh, the where is where we're going to define what the relationships are that are going to define our query. Um, now, this is just a name that you can make up, because this is what I'm going to call my things in my query. And this will be, I'm actually going to change it to person, so it's a bit more descriptive, because we're looking for, for chemists. So we're going to start with our first line of actual query now. And that is, um, what we're basically going to go for is we wanted the, this person that we've defined here with question mark person, we want them to have, and I'm just going to write this in nat natural language first, occupation of a chemist. 
So that's what we're looking for. Um, this won't work in our query, but I just wanted to show you just so that we could you know, see what we're essentially doing. So occupation, to actually put this property in, we're going to need this little prefix. And for now, you just say, OK, that's just what I need to do to define a property, which is WDT colon. Now, that, um, this basically is one, it's the simplest way to sort of say occupation something or date of birth something. And it's, uh, um, once you've done this, we're going to use our first Wikidata query service trick, and we're going to press control and space at the same time. Oops, I did not do that right. Let's see what I've got to do back here. So control and space, and you should see type, type a search to find an entity here. And I'm going to type occupation. And as you can see, it has come up with the property. It knows I'm looking for properties because of the WDT first. And if I select that, you can see what it's done. It's replaced it with the P106, which is what it needs to know. And if I hover over that, um, now for the, if we've got occupation, now we want to say chemist. And just like we had WDT for the property, to, to, to just talk about a property, to talk about a value now, or an actual item rather, um, we type WD, and now control space will work for finding items. And in this case, I'm looking for the Wikidata item for the concept chemist. And that's the, you see that's come up with this, uh, this Q number, which I think... Um, does that work for everyone? You can find that search. Now, if we... Um, what we do is we put a full stop at the end because it's like a state, this is like a sort of a, a, a line and it's you sort of put a full stop at the end of a sentence sort of thing. Um, now, I'm going to, and have you got that 593644? That's the manual one. WD colon. Now, you should be able to run this query when, you, when you've got that in. If you've run your list, have, have you got a set of results that looks like this? We can see the major problem with this. It's, it's true results, and if I click on that, um, I've got, and now we're not, we're not filtering to say females yet, so I've ended up with a male chemist here. But you can see I do have a list of chemists, it's just that I can't read what their names are. And of course, what we want is their labels. Now, Sparkle has a, a, a built-in ways of getting labels, which will work across all, all services, things using Sparkle. But, Wikidata has a label service, which is particularly useful. Um, so what we're going to do, and this might be a little bit awkward for without the control space, because we have to do control space here in a, in a blank space underneath it. And what we're looking for, there's loads of ready-made options here that might be useful. The one we're actually looking for is label, this label service. And if you want, you can even type label. But we need to have this label service in. Now... At the moment, that doesn't do anything. It just sits there. And it, the only rule is it kind of has to be within your where area, inside the square brackets. But we're going to type person label with a capital L in our select area. So I've just added that on. And basically, the, the, the label service will mean that if you add a capital L label to the end of any, any item, that you've selected, you'll get its label. And you'll see what I mean with this. So we'll run the query. And actually, we'll probably actually filter these results down a little bit to a female, etc., so it runs a bit more quickly. But I'll just let that run, and we'll just, just see what that... There we go. So you see what we're left with now? We've now got two columns, because we've, we're selecting two things. Uh, and we've got the item and the label. And so these are all the sort of names. And at the moment... The reason they're in English is because my label service is actually set to auto language first. Uh, so that'll come from, but I've then, got, I've then got English if it can't find out the automatic. But I could happily just change this for like Arabic or any other language. And it would automatically be saying I'm looking for the Arabic labels, you know, with an English fallback. Ex ex exactly, and in fact, you know, I mean, we'll we'll do that just for our next our next little set of results. That's Arabic with an English fallback at the moment. A R colon E N. Um, but what we're going to do is we need to filter this further, 
So we're going to do a new statement and basically in Sparkle every new line that you're making is like filtering down further and further to a smaller set and we want the person to have, this time we're using the same syntax but we're looking for gender is the property that we're looking for. So I've, I've written the WDT and I've done my control space but it's P21 is the ultimate thing we end up with. So the person has to have a P21 which is and the item I'm looking for this time is female. And it says here, the description tells me it's a human who is female, perfect, as opposed to female organism and some of these other things. But that's the one we're looking for. It's a ridiculously long Q number for female. And man, ma male is also one, just one, one other one before that. You know, in, um, it's just because they messed up a little bit in the beginning and had an original concept of male and female. Uh, which needed replacing. So yeah, this is quite, it's quite an exercise in um, memorizing numbers of the control space, isn't it? And I'll put another full stop on the end. And now when we run this, um, which some of you may have done already, um, okay, so we're basically, You'll notice here that some of my results are in Arabic here. We are filtered down to women. These look like all women's names, the ones that are in English. You can see that basically in terms of Arabic labels, you know, we're, they're sporadically there, but we're still missing quite a lot of Arabic labels, clearly, for these, these women. Um, I'm going to just change that back to English for a moment, just so that we've got it simple. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, basically, the, what, what, we could, what we've done there is if, well, in fact, if I was just to say Arabic only, it makes it a little bit clearer what's going on. So these are literally, this one here, this item, no one has yet added the Arabic label. And if I go to this person, you'll see, okay, all entered languages. And you can see that the, her name has been added in all these different languages, but not in... You can see that it's not in, in this language, it's not in Persian here, not in Hebrew. Um, but in ta Tamil language, she, she, she does have a label there. So it's basically a matter of somebody who speaks Arabic comes along and goes, oh, yeah, hang on a minute, I know what her name is, you know, and that's basically it. And the story so far is that we've been, we've been defining our query with these lines here. And we've got the person has to have an occupation <laughs> of chemists. And the person has to have a gender, which is female. So we're, so far, we've got to female chemists. And we are um, selecting. These are defining what columns we're getting. And you can see that's the person, which is her actual Wikidata item. And that's the label, which at the moment we've got running in Arabic. And I'm just changing that back to English for a moment. Um, so effectively, um, what we're going to do now is We've got, um, we've got female chemists. Now, what I'd like to do is, um, this is a little bit boring, this result set. I would like to see an image for whoever we can get an image for. So I'm going to now say another line exactly the same as the last ones that we've done. So WDT, and this time I'm looking for an image. Um, and that's the one I'm actually looking for, image of re or, or relevant you know, Im Im image or relevant uh, illustration of the subject, P18. Now, the difference is here, um, and I'm going to almost put a space here to show you the difference here. The first two lines, I actually specified what I wanted this value at the end to be. Um, in this case, I'm not going <coughs> to specify it. I need to just call it something. Because I'm not saying I want the image, all well, the results to have this exact image. I'm just saying, I'm saying, well, I want to know what the image is. So you put it in as a question mark. Now, if I go up here and put image, nothing will show unless I actually select it. It's not going to sort of show me a new column with images or anything. But what I should have now is if I play this, um, you can see I've got a new column for the image. And so I've now got my person, my person label, and the image, and that's an image from Commons. And I'm just going to show you that here we have, um, it's a bit awkward the way my screen's jumping up and down there, but if you can see there that you have um, some display options after you've run your query. Now that we've got images, we've got our first few options coming up. And the image grid is the one I want to just quickly show you now. 
So now we're all ready, and it will take a moment to load them all up. But already with a simple query, we've already got something a bit prettier to look at. It's like an image grid of female chemists. Um, so there we go. Sorry, can you just spell that up again? Yes. So where it was was here. And effectively, it's, um, you know, it, it's, that's, that's got your default view. I mean, on mine, it just I keep on, it won't let me stay there right in the middle. But and let me just browse zoom a little bit, maybe. OK, so yeah, the, the default view is table, and that's where we started, and the other ones are going to come available. So there's loads of other visualizations here, and what I want to do is just take you through getting some of the... We want to, well, I want to make the timeline option come to life, and I want to make the map option come to life. So what we're going to do is, well, to get, um, to, get, to get some kind of meaningful date to have in a timeline, the birth date is the logical thing for people. Um, so I want my person, just like before, to have this, and I'm going to do a control space. Oops, keep on doing that. Let's see where I am. Oops, I lost it completely. OK. So I'm going to do a, what I'm looking for this time is um, date of birth. And if I just type... Um, in any order, it should be able to find that. So P569 is our date of birth property. So yes. Quick question? Sure, yeah. These um, identifier, no, but I'm assuming you covered this before, so I do apologize. Oh, yeah, yeah. But basically, the deal is, is that we're using this prefix as the way of describing a Wikidata property. <laughs> so effectively, all the descriptive properties like place of birth, date of birth, your image, your, you know, your height, all the properties we use to describe the data uh, all have a unique P number, and that's our identifier on Wikidata. And that's arbitrary or serial? Well, they are, they are sort of persistent. I'll give you an example here. Like just, so the Q numbers are the actual concepts. Um, so we have this is Joanna Badwig. That's her Q number, always will be. Um, but here are the properties used to describe her, and you can see instance of is P31, and always will be, meaning what is it? Uh, image is P18 and always will be. So they're just the same as the Q numbers in a way, but for uniquely identifying the properties. And that's basically... Uh, and the prefix here, the WDT, is it gives us... A, it's what's called the truthy or simple version of the property. And it just gives us a very simple answer to a question. Um, and our, Basically, it's the one you always want to use in the beginning, is WDT colon. And after that, you use a slightly more complicated version which allows you to get deeper into it and get into the uh, qualifiers and references. But for now, we're going to keep with the simple version because it does 99% of everything you need anyway. Um, so uh, what I want to do is I'll call this uh, just birth date. We're not allowed spaces. I mean, you can call these what you like. I've just done birth date with a, a capital D there. Um, but... As with everything, we're not really going to, we're not going to see a new column of results unless we add it to the top. And bear in mind, the visualization options can't see that data unless we select it. So as far as it's concerned, there is no date of birth until it's been selected to visualize it. So I'm going to press play on that. And we've now got a new column with the date of birth but I'm going to go to table now and see what other options, and now I've got timeline available. So now we have, um, we have a timeline, and you can see, uh, I can, uh, this is the simple built-in timeline for the query service. Um, we'll show you shortly a Histopedia version, which, which is a little bit nicer. But already you can see the sort of power with a few lines. We've got um, timelines and image grids. These can all be shared. Uh, yes, and this is one of the things. One of the things I was gonna I was gonna show you in a second is the fact that you uh, you, you can see that we have um, on the left we've got one of these options just to share a link. Now what that'll be is that that will share a link just to this page with the query visible and everything else. But after you've run the query, you've got these little options down here at the top, and one of the great ones is is short URL to result. And if I click on that one, this actually gives me a sort of a full page version of, of it. So it's a link that will get someone just to the query results. And one little thing to add there, if I was to share that query, you'll see what it does over here. 
So this is my short URL to the result. And you see, I get a full screen. They've even got a little search filter up there. Uh, but it's not in my timeline view. And so how do we choose which view we actually want for this? And the way we do that is by putting in a line with a comment. Now, comments always come after a ha uh, the hash symbol. And basically, you'll, know, you'll see it's actually come up with a whole load of options here, which is what it's looking for to know. And if I said default view timeline, that now knows that, that's what, that when I click run, that's the view that it wants. And likewise, now that I've done that, if I click short URL to result, that will be to the timeline or whatever view I've chosen. OK, um, so we're just going to move on now to get, uh, is everyone OK with that so far? Any questions or anything? Uh, we're just going to uh, do one, little, one last thing here, which is that we want to get a, a, a map of where, where they were born. So we're looking to get a map of where all these different chemists were born. So we're going to say the person has, and it's the same syntax again, but we're going to say uh, place of birth this time which is a P19. And I'm going, to, um, I'm going to say this is called just birthplace. Now, if I type birthplace here, and I try and select this new birthplace, what I'll get is I will get, um, I, I will get the Wikidata column with the Wikidata item numbers for these birthplaces, like London. It will come up as you know, Q42, and it will be a list of Q numbers. And just like I've done here with person label, it's actually what I'm really interested in is the birthplace label. So I've put the capital L label on the end. Um, and if I just run that a second. Actually, I'm going to take off this default view timeline for a second as well. So I'm just going to press run on that. Um, OK, so look, you see my new column here. I've got birthplace on the end, Nashville, et cetera, et cetera. I don't know why someone's got, I oh, know that's not two different birthplaces, but it's fine. Now, the problem is, you'll notice here, the map has not yet come to life. So we know where they were born, but the query itself doesn't actually know where those places are yet on a globe. So all we need to do is use this. This is like the magic of Sparkle is that you'll kind of you'll find connections to things and you can really connect it to any other bit of data once you know the syntax. And so what we so far, everything we've been finding out is about the person. But this time we want to find something out about the birthplace because we know there is this birthplace. You've got that now. But we want that birthplace, we want the coordinates of that birthplace. And that's where we use the property coordinates location. And I'm going to say coordinates. Now, that one line there is kind of the magic of Sparkle, because we've said the birthplace is connected to the person. And then we're saying that from that birthplace, we're connecting to the coordinates. And of course, that sort of chain of events could go on as long as you like. Um, I'm going to now select those coordinates. And bear in mind, if I didn't care about actually seeing the birthplace itself in my columns, I could remove that. It wouldn't matter. We've, we've defined how to get to the coordinates. So I'll just I'll click play on that. And, uh, and once, you've got, once you've copied that in there, you should be able to select a map. And that's what we see. So we've got a map of the birthplaces of the female chemists in, uh, in Wikidata. So already, with a very simple few definition lines, and you see we've only used the same thing every time. We've used WDT property, WD uh, you know, item, or a variable we're looking for. And we've ended up with um, quite a rich map. And if you click on one of these dots, you'll see it pops up with a little card and you know, a, nice, a very nice thing to embed. Now, one thing. I'd like to point out just at this second here. So we've actually we've kind of got to the objective that I was looking for, that we've, we've now learned how to basically how to connect, how to find the data we're looking for. 
Because yeah. what we're basically doing is we're saying with every new line, we're saying it has to have this data. We actually really don't want to be doing that. The other issue on a map is that you're going to be seeing lots of points overlaid and potentially if, if 20 of them are born in London, you're going to see one dot in London uh, because there's one centroid unless you unless we find out which borough they were born in and that starts to divide off. Um, I've just put that option, just to quick, everyone just copies that because the key thing is normally with an image, you really don't want to miss the result just because they don't have an image. And what you'll notice is you've got the count of results here. It said my last count was 173 results. If I run that again, I'm now up to 434 results in one fell swoop um, because the image condition is now okay, taken away. And what you'll find is actually, to be quite honest, this, is, this would be a logical thing to do in this query. Say, so you know what, I'm, I want this data, but only if it's there. I don't want to miss results if it's not. Put it around all of them. Now, the, 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 basically, I'm doing these around individual lines, and it's a great way of using optional, just to say, look, this thing, I want it to be optional. And, it, and what, 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 it, what it will amount to is you'll have occasional blank fields here, which you never have without the optional. Um, uh, but basically, that's the key to getting the extra results that we're missing. One little thing here is that this little thing is a bit of a combo. It goes together, doesn't it? We've got the person's place of birth, and then we've got the, the, the place of birth coordinates. So with this one, if I wanted to make this optional, then I, I would actually wrap it around the whole double line in this case. Now, I was going to guess that mm. this relationship between place and coordinate yeah. could be quite complicated. Yeah. Were, would be wrapped up in a service. Now I've not seen the service thing before, mm. and I thought, oh, that's really cool. That that's you know that's doing something that can be quite complicated. Yes. Yeah. Um, so why is that there a place there? Well, there actually is, but okay. it's it, it's for um, the the issue is is it's for like in in this case. Because there's the simple coordinates of we, the, this P625 property is always the coordinates for anything. So it yeah. can be for a city, it will be classed as the center point. Uh, but then the, the main thing is, is that you actually, they have this service for working with coordinates. And that's how you do queries of things that are in a surrounding area or in a boundary box. So you can do a query for what's, uh, what's within 10 kilometers of us anything uh, in, a, in a radius and you bring it up on a map and you'll see a big circle of the dots. Uh, for that you do use the around service uh, the, the, which has got great ways of sort oh, okay. of... And it's, I it, that to do things like say in, it's in the UK if, the name, if it says she's born in Edinburgh. Or... Well that, that's normally something that you have to define yourself in your query but you can find those relationships because you're saying look I want a person who was born in a place and that place, I want it to be, you know, in Edinburgh or, or in, you know, in Scotland or whatever is your criteria. Um, so it's more of a connectivity thing. But I have to say, this is where you want to explore here is in the example section. Uh, and you'll see there's some really cool examples. It's kind of basically where, where, like, where you should just go and try and get inspiration for what you can do. Uh, and if you, look, um, if you look at sort of like, um, uh, let's have a look, I just typed, yeah, distance or within or something like that. Okay, airports within 100 kilometers of Berlin, uh, as it happens, or places within one kilometer of the Empire States Building. I'm just going to run that query and we'll see. So there we go. And I'm just going to put that on a map and we'll see that's the result of this. But it just gives you a little place to start if you want to look at how the, how the label service works. Um, and it's, um, I'll just show you that on a map quickly. Um, so uh, that's that's you see that's the that's basically what you've ended up with you know uh, as you would expect a bunch of dots held within that circle. Um, so really cool. I mean that's like some of the the location based of the queries you can do are just unbelievable. Um, but essentially, essentially that is that's the major. I mean what we've gone over now that can write like almost uh, such a whole massive range of queries, you know, like just go to an item. So I want to find, oh, there's, I want to find cats. Go to the page of a famous cat. Oh, how is he described? Right, it's an instance of cat. So I'll put that in my query. I want my thing to be WDT P31 
cat. And that's basically it. So uh, what I would like to do, we've actually got like about 13 minutes, well, yeah. 13, 15 minutes left. I actually think that that we've got uh, all the skills here to actually just try and construct a query of our own here. Like just, just come up with something you're interested in and try to find the Wikidata item for that thing. Like I just gave the example of, um, of uh, cats, but let's say that I was looking for my query, I wanted it to be uh, planets. So I look up Mars, fourth planet from the sun. Okay, how do we know that's a planet? And it's got, okay, instance of inner planet of the solar system. So, you know, maybe that's too specific for me, but maybe I'm all right with that. But yeah, this is what I'd encourage you to do now. Like, uh, you can use anything here. Like, say here, look, I've got part of the solar system. So if I was to go back here and say, I wonder what other stuff is part of that, I'll delete all of these. I'm going to delete all of those. I'm left with the basic structure again. And I'll say, I'm looking for the item, and I want the item's label. And I want the item to be WDT part of WD colon the solar system. So you see what I've done there. I've just looked at a statement on the page, and now I'm putting that into my query. And when I type, there we go, I've got a list of things which are part of the solar system, according to that. So that's the process. So it's about 10 minutes, and I, I just would love it if everyone was able to think, okay, let me find a person or a thing I'm interested in, maybe a building, might be a place, might be a planet, might be a concept, a mathematical formula, or something like that. Just try and find the Wikidata item that you would like your list to include, and try and figure out how you would get a list of those things. The, the other thing is, the examples section at the top of the Wikidata query service is a good place to start off both. Absolutely. Like, look, I mean, if, if, you, if, you, and if you type a search there, I mean, I've got cats, that, that, that's come up with a few, but there's obviously they were right at the top. But if you, would, if you were to type something you're interested in, um, okay, buildings in more than one country, some of these, when you open them up, are going to be more advanced queries. But we could change, I mean, something like that, places within one kilometre of the Empire State Building, you could easily change the Empire State Building. Absolutely to true. Something local. Yeah, he's absolutely, because look, that's the beauty of modification here, because look, he's saying there, look, go to the query, I've hovered <coughs> over that, and I can find that that's the Empire State Building. Um, slightly different syntax that we were using, because you can see it appeared first, basically, because we're saying the Empire State Building needs to have a location of this location, and it's sort of just finding out what the location of it is. Uh, but you could change this to something else, and we'll say, let's make that instead... Um, the London Eye, maybe? Yeah. And now I'll click play. And with that one simple change, we should, on our map, be able to see things much more clearly. That is indeed the London Eye. So you see the idea, and we can change the radius as well. If we look in here in that query, they had another little bit that was saying what the distance is. And you see it's got radius is 1 one of the label service parameters. So yeah, have a fiddle around. See if you can come up with any kind of query, either a modified one or if you're feeling really brave, go from scratch and try and build something. But basically, yeah, and just, just, just like holler as soon as you need a bit of advice about anything. But here's a challenge for you now. Yes. Um, can we get a list of all the political parties in the world and the number of members that they have? Yes. Interesting, interesting. So we're basically looking for all the political parties in the world and we want to count up their members. So I guess the first thing is we need to um, firstly look up, sorry, I'll just look up the um, Conservative or some party here. Uh, is this something that the Every Politician Project works Absolutely true. I mean, we know that this data is, is nowhere near complete because there is a huge project un underway that Ewan was mentioning there. There's this Every Politician uh, project, and it's a huge in initiative to try to get the data about every single you know, politician, member of parliament, and across all countries described you know, in terms of the term that they served and, and, and what's going on, because it's considered such vital knowledge for people to be able to access. But it is possible. One thing we didn't go into here is any of the counting commands, and the counting commands are incredibly powerful, uh, but they are 
Not too hard to learn, but it's just another segment. It's like I consider that to be phase two after this. But the first thing I would do is I would just try and find out if we could get that list. So this is an instance of political party, which seems like a nice, real simple measure. Um, so what I would like to do, um, and I, I think as well, let's have a look and see if they have country. Okay, so here's an interesting thing just to do immediately, uh, is let's have, let's get rid of all of that a second. Um, and I guess if everyone's um, effectively, oh, actually, let me just get rid of all of that, sorry. Yeah, and obviously, just let us know if you need a, need a hand with anything particular. I'm just going to show how I'd get to this. So, basically, we're looking for a party. And we'll get the party label. And my definition there was that the party had instance of And it was political party. And you see, it always normally for me it basically involves looking at how, you know, how it's been described. Uh, and unfortunately, you know, you will find inconsistencies all the time where it might have been done like this for the British ones, and then completely differently for you know for the Spanish ones or whatever it would be. Yes. Uh, but basically, what we've got here is quickly a list of political parties. Uh, so that's like we've got that with one line basically. Um, the other thing that's of interest here, just quickly before we do the counting thing, um, is what about the country? Because then you can sort of order this by, um, um, I'm going to call that country. Uh, and that's the country label. Right, will that work for parties that cover more than one country, such as the... But that should at least give us, uh, yeah, a list broken down by country. And if we were looking to count members, now the question is how are the members described? And I would have thought it's by the, the, on, the, on the person's page itself. So if we go to Theresa May, I'm presuming she's going to be a member of the Conservative Party. Has it got a member count on the item? Is that member count? How in brilliant? Okay, so let's have a look if that's directly available. Because if that's directly available and well filled out, then it means we don't need any of the fancy sparkle counting commands because we can get the count as just a straightforward answer to one of our questions. So party uh, has to have um, member count. It's a new one on me. I've not I've not seen that property. Yes, and now hopefully, because we've restricted our results to political parties, this count should be what we're kind of looking for. Well, let's see. I mean, I, I'm purposefully not uh, putting an option around this because we're actually interested in how many results actually have this meaningful data. 304 have our count. I haven't selected it yet. So it's obviously beginning to be used. This might be part of the Every Politician project, actually. Uh, but look, yeah, so we've got our count of members here. And actually, what we can do, because we've now got a column with some numbers in it, it's a great thing that we can just do immediately, is just we get the bubble chart available, um, which is a beautiful way of looking at counts. So you can see, uh, um, it's a funny old shape at the moment, because I haven't ordered it by something. And if you actually look at, um, I don't know why that seems to, but there we go. So it goes... Yes, and what we've got, I don't know why that's, that's a very strange little glitch. I lose, oh, it's still there, but I can't see it. Um, so basically what we'd like to do here is at the end, afterwards, after our, the end of our bracket, we can just do order by. And, um, and if I order by count, it will start with the smallest one, but I would like a descending count, so I want the, 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 the big ones on the top. So I just type descending, and then I can put count in brackets here. And this is just a way that you can order your results. If you did it with a birth date instead, so if you'd order by birth date, it would <coughs> try and order them chronologically. It's like a kind of a clever ordering. Um, oh, yeah, we, we are there, aren't we? But I'll just press play on that. Uh, yeah, yeah, far away. We'll be, we'll be. So I've, I've, um, I've, I've written a query that pulls out Star Trek characters with their, with their pictures. Brilliant, um, brilliant. And, um, and we're having a problem because I'm pulling out that rank 
two. Um, and uh, and that's our final result there. Interesting little result. The, um, yeah, this is just the, the JavaScript. This is our, our timeline engine has now been sort of taken apart so you can actually use it with any data and it's sort of a free for non-commercial use thing so you can just kind of go ahead and use this. Um, but uh, basically, yeah, this is sort of um, one of the things. I mean, it's, uh, I, I, I've, I've defined a lot of these demos just by running, um, running queries, um, basically. Let me just get... A good example there. Okay, so that's a good one. So I, I basically ran a ran a, a Wikidata query to get some data, and then I've sort of thrown it in and made a slightly more customised version of the interface. So these are all the uh, Island Record albums, um, you know, with decade decade uh, markers, and effectively this is actually using the ranking system. And you can see there the idea behind it that you need to you know you zoom out and you get the important ones and you zoom in, and it slowly shows you more. But yeah, it's a great example of how that, that's me running a query and downloading the data, because we had a download option there, and just using it for, to build this thing. You, know, you can just use it for whatever you like. Uh, and of course, if you know how to code a little bit, you can do really powerful things. But even without that, one of the download options is just CSV, and you can open it in a spreadsheet and start manipulating it and doing things with it.